You know what's tough about clickbait is I don't know if you guys are dating or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, that's, that's like the half clickbait. the internet. It's tough because I went and I did research yesterday on you guys. Yeah, did you? I, I, I watched a bunch of episodes. I really liked it. You're and, still confused? And I'm still confused, nice. but it's okay. I don't really even need to know. And listen, we're not going to tell you, and that's how it's going to go. <laughs> What's up, guys? And welcome to episode 109 of Dropouts. This week, we have the godfather of comedy, the vlog squad vigilante, the man who is better than everyone else, Jason Nash. What's going on, buddy? What an Ooh. intro. It's really nice. I can think of, I don't know, godfather of comedy. Maybe, maybe godfather of... Shitty internet videos. That's so <laughs> there you go. And that's Maybe. still something. We also have something else to add to that. What? My mom's celebrity crush. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, you are my mom's celebrity crush. Shut up. Yeah. Are, are you currently in a relationship? I am not. Okay, well, well not we my have mom. a girl for you. <laughs> Where is your mom and how tall is she? Uh, she's 5'6". Nice. I like that. Okay. I, well, I can tower over her. She's Australian. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not a, as excited about that. No, he's like, no, no, no. no. I like, want a cold-blooded American, please. <laughs> um, does your accent go in and out? Yeah, it does. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what, oh, yeah. what a treat. <laughs> the comments are always like, she's not Australian, <laughs> and we hate her that she tries to be one. And we're yeah. like, actually, she was born there. No, born but, and raised. You're um, a regular Margot Robbie. L- a lot less talented and a lot less cool. So but. this was a quote from Indy's mom. She said... If I was there, I would slide off my seat for him. And oh, yeah. God. yeah. Oh my God, no. Yeah. Oh, there, there's the accent. No. Uh, no. 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 She's going to kill me. How, how old is she? Uh, 50. 50. Oh, okay. 50. Okay, that's perfect. 50. I'm 49. So that's and that way good. she can teach you some things because she's lived a longer life than you. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <She's> 50. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Zach. When you get up to this age, <laughs> no, nobody knows the fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody that can teach you anything. Well, well, Everyone's broken. And where is she? Is, is she in Australia? She travels back and forth. Really? For what the you, most part, she's like here. And I don't know. She literally spins 50 50. Can so. we get a pick up on the screen? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can we bring right, it up here, a pick, I got please? It. I got it. Yeah, you got to get you got to get a good one. This could be a match. Jared, don't oh, you there it up, is. There it is. Don't you pull up a photo because she sent me photos to show. Oh, did she? If we spoke about this. Well, I like that we hit it off the top. Uh, airdrop the nudes. Oh, she'll send some. Here we go. Julie Massar. That is not my mom. <laughs> I just found a random woman that also is named Julie Massara. She's very cute. That's not my mom. I have to say, knowing that she's Australian, I'm already like expecting yeah, something you know, very good. You know she'll go down under. <laughs> she wants me to send two. There's this one, and then she wants me to send... Here's the first one. Oh! Oh, oh damn! <laughs> Here's the second that's picture. I knew it. That's a that's a recent picture. Yeah, that is a recent picture. Oh, I knew I I knew it. I knew <laughs> she was gonna be off the chain. There you go. I fucking knew it. Australian people, Chris Hemsworth, El McPherson, they are hot. They are hot. And Julie, what's her name? Julie. Julie is just carrying on the great Australian tradition. I mean, she's gonna love that you said that. And she is more than willing to change her last name to Nash like pretty soon. Julie so. Nash. Just that changed it back to tongue. her maiden name, so yeah. Does she like Kirby enthusiasm? Yeah, she does. Okay, that's my lit- litmus test for any girl I do. That is my that is my airplane show. A lot of people get mad at me for saying that, but every time I'm on an airplane, I do enjoy a quick flick of that. Really? Why would people get mad at you for that? That's the because they're thing. like you need to enjoy it, not on an airplane because you're distracted by too many things. Uh, um, are you? That's the time I'm like most focused and dialed in. My mom's in. gonna love that. Also, hit some intro music for me. Oh, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> Let me love you, girl, <laughs> Julie. She's Ooh. gonna love that you said that. Um, she first of all, also you gotta give someone like that credit who's fifty that looks like that. Yeah, like that's hard. You guys look good, how, but you're young. How'd you get the How'd you get the hairline at your age? That's you have that's great what I'm hair. Wondering. My father, my grandfathers both had full heads of hair. I mean, yeah, yeah. Your great friend, hair. your friend group. It feels like you took it from all of them. I love to walk up to Zane and Heath and just laugh in their face. <laughs> I have a fan. I have my assistant hold a fan off and can we, it just goes. <laughs> can we talk about how good Heath looks recently? Oh my it's God. Ridiculous. Isn't it unreal? Unreal. I want him to hold me and like carry me out of a fire. That Zila program. I'm about to start. 
You're gonna, you're gonna do it. I'm about to start with Ilya. He's gonna be Zila's first athlete or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's great. Like, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm nervous though. But we're we're here for Jason. Jason, we're gonna take it back a little bit. Um, I don't know how far you want to go, but I kind of want to get into the history. I know that's a little boring, but I want to find out. I don't think it's boring. I like my history. I uh, think it's interesting. I think you also have an interesting history as well. No, I'm, I'm just I'm just mean like people have probably always oh, boring for everyone else. People no people <laughs> are always like hey. Uh, Let's talk about the beginning on every podcast you've ever been to. But where where do you want to start? Because I kind of want to get more into like the entertainment field. So when I was is that? Born in a tiny farmhouse. Were you? Yes. And uh, oh, Jesus, I was sent from the planet Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> two farmers found me. That's so beautiful. I lifted a tractor and uh, and somehow saved you, my baby brother. How'd you get into internet videos then? Because uh, it seems like you could have just streamlined into success from there. I was saving the world uh -huh. uh, as Superman, okay. uh, living as Superman, and um, someone said, "Hey, you should try YouTube." Cool. <laughs> um, and you were like, "That's a good pivot." Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, no, I just uh, how did I get into? Oh, I, I was just doing stand up one night. Yeah. At the Improv, and David was in the audience, and um, I walked off stage, and he was like. You know, he had his camera and he had his, like, he used to wear a hat. He was like, hey, <laughs> can you come do that bit tomorrow in my vlog? <laughs> like and you're, you're like, yes, random kid. <laughs> What's a vlog first? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I knew who he was and I was like, oh yeah, for sure. And then back then, you guys know, you always get asked to be in like in little internet videos mm -hmm. and that's just kind of what we do. And uh, so I went over and then uh, it went good. And I was like, oh, I'll never hear from him again. You know, like whatever, yeah. he's a kid. And, um, and then he called me that night and that was it. We just, I just got really lucky, you know, and I was just really, really lucky to meet him. And, um, and I was lucky that we had the same sensibility and stuff. So yeah, that was it. And that was like four or five years ago. Wow. And But even before that, I think you had a really cool history because mm -hmm. you had an internship at SNL. Yes, I worked. I had, really? Yeah, I worked there wow. as an intern on Adam Sandler's last year. And then I worked there. I worked there when Will Ferrell and like David Koechner came in and Tracy Morgan. That's crazy. Not so a bad crew. It oh was great. God. It was great. That what, was, what was it like, kind of being someone in comedy, then being around those co comedic minds? Were you intimidated? Were you just felt blessed that? Were you? Did you feel like you were maybe on the same level? What was kind of? No, totally intimidated and totally. I was only like twenty years old or twenty one yeah. years old, and I didn't even know anything about comedy or anything, and and I wasn't funny. So what? Wait, how'd you get the internship then? Oh, so you just would, I was in college yeah. and uh, they have an internship program and you just apply. So I applied to Dateline oh. and, I, and I applied to Saturday Night Live and I didn't really want Dateline, but I thought, oh, okay, if I don't get Saturday Night Live, maybe I'll go do Dateline. Yeah. Cause back then I was like, maybe going to be a journalist. Uh, but then I did, I did acid and I, <laughs> I didn't, As you do. I, I didn't want to be a journalist anymore. Nice. And well, so then, yeah, we, my mother like drove me down to 30 Rock from Boston. And she was always pretty supportive of, cause I mean, especially traditionally, even nowadays, like this is a tough lifestyle to tell your parents you're getting into. How did you kind of break the news to her that you weren't gonna go traditional route, the safer route? Oh, it was the worst. Yeah. It was the worst. I mean, it was after my sister's softball game and I was in the car with my mom and dad and we were in like a Burger King parking lot. And I was like, I want to be a comedian. And they were like- What age was this? I was probably like 19, something yeah. like that. And my father, he just goes, well, you're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Your sister's the funny one. Like that. Wow, thanks, and, Dad. And he was right. You know, yeah. my sister is the funny uh is, is way funnier than what you. Is, what does your sister do nowadays? Uh, she she created 30 Rock. Oh, <laughs> not um, bad. Yeah, no. <laughs> my, sister, my sister's Tina Fey. Uh, no, my, she's a computer programmer. But like you guys know, you all grew up with like funny people. And, like, I don't know if you were the funniest kid in your yeah, high school. Yeah, of course he was. He maybe, was maybe he was, but I, I wasn't. No. Yeah. And, yeah, and was so I. like I, I had 10 friends in Boston that were funnier than me. Uh, just everybody, and but it was just something that I really, really wanted to do, and I just Boston humor is some of my favorite because it, because it's just busting balls to it's the, the absolute best mass, humor. yeah. And then nobody gets offended by anyone else, but we're, you just go in and in and in, especially if you're friends. Yeah, um, that's what I love about Australia. Australia is exactly like that. But no, what 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 made you have that conversation with your parents? What made you like I? This is something I want to pursue. Like what lit that kind of fire? You know, honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. I couldn't, I had some office jobs and I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. And so I was like, I, I guess I got to try this. And 
I don't know. If I had to do it over again, I probably would just pussy out and not do it. <laughs> even, <laughs> really? Yeah. Even if you know it worked out, eventually it like, took too long. Yeah, I was like, even after like knowing all of this, it's like you'd still <laughs> No, no. Up. If I knew I would have made it, then yeah, I would have done it. I mean, it. if well, anyone yeah, knows they're going to make it. Yeah, obviously. But I wouldn't have leaped for it at all. Like I feel the same now. way. If I had, like, do you guys ever feel that way? If you ever had the chance to redo it, would do you think you would have gone the same route and done it? Not knowing your outcome. I think it would have started sooner. Yeah, I definitely would have started sooner. If like not knowing I, if I could take back one piece of knowledge, it would be that I didn't really need college for this. You know, like I learned everything just watching YouTube tutorials of like just you, how to edit, how to make music, blah, 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 how to podcast, like all that stuff. So I would also say I don't recommend starting sooner because somebody that started at 13 years old traumatizing. Well, I'm not saying starting sooner as <laughs> a teenager, but like jumping into it at like 19, you know, or mm-hmm. 18 or something like that, like out of high school rather than, you know, waiting for a few years after college and stuff. And yeah. then just- there's, there's also a burnout factor too. Like there's lots of people that start at 18 and achieve everything and, yeah. and they burn out, you what? know? So like your road is your road. And did you, bef- before the vlogs, did you have continued to, success in in the entertainment industry or were no. you you feel like you were struggling we is this i have this picture of you on were you in sweet life on deck <laughs> he's oh. about to start crying no i don't know we <laughs> or sweet life were you oh in- i was on drake and josh drake and josh yeah yeah i, I, I got you. sweet life with zach and cody is that yeah. what that is is, is Sweet Life on Deck? Is that a spinoff? Oh, I don't know why I keep saying Sweet Life on Deck. It is a spinoff. <laughs> that's a that's a porno spinoff that we just watched it's, between us. It's, so. it, it's really tough with TV shows with you guys because when you guys were watching those shows, I was like, you know, fucking having kids, you know. So it's <laughs> oh my so it's tough. Like a lot of the references, I'm like, I know what Sweet Life is, but yes, that's I was funny. on Drake and Josh. Well, okay, we'll get back to. Line. No, I it was kind of funny the episode we had Josh on recently, and uh, I saw, and he. Uh, yeah, he he really really likes you, but That's I was nice. I was gonna I, like him too. I was gonna talk about um, Josh the funniest. Yeah, he's he's so and so genuine and like very genuine. Yeah. So, so like and you, a skilled skilled comedic technician. Oh, 100 yeah. percent, and knows how to read a room and run a yeah, room yeah, yeah, and yeah, make yeah, sure yeah, everything's yeah. going the right way. Yeah. But before we, I want to continue down this timeline of your um, of your existence. But before we say that, have you ever heard his son sing? No, no. <laughs> he did a. I did some research too. He did a school project where he sang and a song that it, it felt like Ed Sheeran. Really? What? I'm not lying. Yes, I, I swear on my life. My son was like 13, and the, he was in school, and they were like, "Hey, you, you have to do a project on the Holocaust," and um, and he was like. Ah, okay, okay. He's like, well, can he goes to the teachers and like, can I write a song about the Holocaust? About the Holocaust, Whoa. yeah. And we're Jewish, so you know, close <laughs> to our hearts. And um, and we're like, don't write a song, Wyatt. Just just do the project. Just do the project <laughs> on the Holocaust. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, this I, is I, my I, vision. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> this is my artistic vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. And we're on him for like, you know, a month. Like, you've got to finish your Holocaust project. (laughs) (laughs) They were saying the same thing about Hitler, unfortunately. But you got to finish it. And so the night before, he's up till four in the morning. We're yelling at him. And then I I go in there at like, you know, two or three in the morning. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, you got to go to bed. Like, you have school in like two, two, three hours. And he's like, he's like, okay, I'm almost done. And he like hits the space bar on the computer. And then the most beautiful song about the Holocaust comes out. Like, really? It's fucking bone chilling. It's like, it's like, it's got soldiers marching. It's like, gar, har, har, bar, you know, and it's got like sirens and- um, Okay, it's not true. Okay, what I'm about to say is very not true, but it was almost worth- No, the, Zach. The song's Zach. good. The song's good. Uh, Zach. <laughs> The song is great. Oh, Every bad thing brings a rose. <laughs> imagine. I want to hear this song. No, imagine God is like, Not okay, so it. we're going to have this thing where it kill, it, it, extinction a ton of people, but one day in about 2018, this kid <laughs> is going to write this song <laughs> that is going mean, to be worth world. it. And all the angels are like, I don't know about this one, God. Um, no, trust me, trust me. Hitler um, lived so my son could walk. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and then great it, band name. It was a cool. It was cool. And uh, did I, your son have any like uh, interest in music before then, or like did you know he was like <laughs> getting into production or singing or anything? Does like he do that? music now? Oh yeah, yeah. He's been playing guitar since he was like I don't know, six or seven. Or oh, okay. I've got to show you the 
whatever it is. I the really Holocaust song. The Holocaust song. I want to hear it. You have it? Is it up? Is it online? I it's, think. On, it's on. It was on. Oh, yeah, it is online. It was on a podcast. Oh, it's on our podcast. Right. Oh, right, here we go. Oh, you got it. I found it. How'd you find it so quick? That was. I just looked up I haven't heard Holocaust this. song. This is so cool because I haven't heard this in a long time. I, I looked up. Can wow. you have it play through our ears? Also, Wyatt the- Nash Holocaust song. Yeah, this is for his school project. <laughs> Listen to this. What the fuck, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> I got me working like a slave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's <laughs> been licking the David's face right now. <laughs> he was listening to a lot of Arctic Monkeys then. I, I was think. gonna say, <laughs> yeah, I was like, it was definitely uh, some influence. Uh, Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> Some 21 pilots. Yeah. Wait, is this Wyatt's voice? Yeah. Oh, wow. That was weird. I, I just thought Natalie was yeah, in the room for a second. Most my family's gone. Two in the morning. Two in the morning, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're like, we got to give this one back to the hospital. <laughs> It's incredible. It's five minutes and 37 seconds, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was fantastic. That was crazy. Then I'm just kind of standing there like, Okay, good job. Keep working. <laughs> <laughs> went, okay, well, get some sleep, bud. It's, yeah. like, it's like, I don't know if I should be like, you got an A or we should do a post-birth abortion so you don't take over the world. <laughs> like, I don't, it's, it's a little terrifying. But it is, be- is it not a beautiful? And so he- A post-birth abortion? It's topical. It's topical. Okay, no. I don't even know what that is. Post. That's just murder. That's just murder. murder. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. No, no. Uh, okay. Am yeah. I so right? then, so then, uh, the funny thing is that he would always ask my his little sister to sing with him because she can sing pretty good, and she would say no, 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 no. And then after that, uh, Phineas heard it, and no now, way. and then that was like the, the artist. Yeah, and then, that was like oh, a big talk around the house. So, so like as it I, should be. I would walk up to Charlie. I'd be like, uh, "You want to work with Wyatt? Well, Phineas likes him." She was like, I know, I heard it. That's, that's the way that. If, if he's still singing, Jared, I'm not even lying, is a fantastic producer. They should just. Oh, really? I, should I just would riff. love to work with him. No, I, I, I did I not lie. You thought I was going to be like, it's some little kid going, the Holocaust is bad. It's really, really bad. <laughs> and said, I'm not a guy of humor. You know, you know what's funny, too, is like, I've noticed this, too. I, I don't think he's like someone that wants to be the, the front of anything. Really? Yeah. And so, that, those make the best artists, though, because they're not do doing they? it with vanity. They're doing right. it in a storytelling kind of way. Yes, yes. That's the coolest thing about being a kid too. Is like when I go watch their plays, like or when I go watch them play their jazz combo, or whatever. There is, there's no vanity in it. There's yeah. no showmanship. It's like they're playing exactly what they've been taught, and they're just trying to play it well. And it's really inspiring. In the yeah. least creepy way, we'd love to watch your kids play instruments sometime. Well, <laughs> yeah, come over. He's at. Um, he's he's at. Or if he has uh, it as a jazz thing or whatever it is. Oh, we love jazz. We here. do yeah. love jazz. I, I was listening to jazz all morning. So, really? Yeah. 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 It. Oh, come, come. Well, I'll take you guys. They have concerts all the time. He's oh, at Berkeley School fun. of Music right now for. Oh, camp. Shut wow. Up. Yeah, 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 Wait, yeah. How old is he? He's sixteen. Oh, he's like, oh my Jesus. gosh! I dropped him off and lived, like living in a. He's living in a dorm there, and I like said goodbye to him and and um and I like started crying saying goodbye and then. I didn't want him to see that I was crying. So I was like, okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was walking away and I look up and I just saw Gwyneth Paltrow just looking at me. <laughs> it was so fucking She's bizarre. like, you want to smell my vagina candle? <laughs> and you're like, no, Gwyneth. I'm, I'm dropping my kid off right now. Please, this is a really emotional moment. <laughs> oh my God. She looked amazing. And then I'm like crying, looking at her like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then I just like hit my face and that was it. Oh God! But yeah, so he's doing good. Yeah, clearly he's we'll see. doing fantastic. That's wild. Yeah, I, w- uh, I wish he. I wish he was like you know, had the like, hey, I want to put on a show, you know, like. But he doesn't really have that thing. He just wants but to. But that's kind of like the Louis Capaldi's of the world, and how many Grammys did Phineas he just win? And, and, the and the Phineas's. Are, that's like, he's true. Just that's Billie true. Billy Eilish's producer and won what six Grammys? Right. How old was he when he did the Holocaust song? He was three. He was three. I mean, no, see, no, articulate. He, he Look how many words he knew. You said he was 13? He was 13. That's crazy. He was in diapers. And now he's like at one of the best music schools in the country. Like, yeah, yeah, where, yeah. Is that in town or? It's Berkeley? in Boston. Oh, yeah. that must have been hard. Uh, no. Oh, he's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> he's like, good riddance. 
You know, they, they get to a point, if it was like a year ago, maybe, or two years ago, but he, he got to a point this year where he's like, he's his own thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's like- 16, it's like, between like 16 and like 18 is a really rough age as somebody that like terrorized my mother and father during that uh, age. My girlfriend? Like- <laughs> Future wife? Yep. Future divorcee? <laughs> That'd be so statistically. Much fun. That'd be so fun to do like Christmas in Australia. Well, imagine we. we I, just, I get. The, I get there first <laughs> before you fly home, and I open the door. I'm like, "Oh, Andy, hey, how are you? I'm Come like, on in. Can I get you anything?" No. Imagine we do like we just. All right, yeah, we had Jason on the podcast, and then he's at every single one of your Christmases for the rest I would of your just life. Be like, that'd be so funny. That'd be a gr that would be a great prank actually. <laughs> if you guys want like this Christmas. Fly, yeah. Oh yeah. We'll fly there <laughs> and I'll open be. Open the door. And, oh, I forgot to introduce you. This is your new stepdad. Did you, he, ever, did you ever? Like, uh, did you ever see the video of him and uh, was it Corinna's mom? Yeah, yeah, Corinna's well, mom. Can you tell the story to her of kind of what happened there? Prank. Yeah, I can definitely tell it. I don't remember it. I, I, I guess what was it? Did I make out? I, I, I think I you made, made it. Like, oh, oh Corinna. Cool. What's the backstory? I don't remember. There's so many bits that I don't. I just remember he took like a picture. There was like a bit going on, like he was saying, like Corinna, your mom wants me, and she's like, no, he doesn't. I'm butchering this, but uh, later in the night, he sent a picture of him kissing Corinna's mom, well, like in bed. In bed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was we hilarious. went in bed. Yeah, yeah. I went in her bed and I took a photo. I can't remember the backstory on it. Oh my god. But it was something like that. Yeah, and Corinna was mad. And then later, <laughs> Corinna got in bed with my mom. What? Oh what? Lovely. Probably didn't need that part of the. the bit. <laughs> <laughs> that one was just. You know, yeah. your mom was just trying to find herself in her seventies. It happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would hook up with someone's mom. That sounds good. I like Australia. Do you live by the beach? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> yeah. She lives in a beautiful home. Oh, you oh, would love does. it. Oh, her home is gorgeous. It's like surrounded by this like lap pool. It's all glass. The really? gardens. Go There's a tennis court. A lovely gym with a sauna. Quit my podcast. Uh, yeah, I live there. Just I think oh, she's still yeah, fertile. Oh, it's like 20 so minutes from the beach. I think she's really? still fertile. Yeah. So if you sneak one in now, like you you got that <laughs> money for life. for life. Yeah. It, yeah, her her home is gorgeous. No, no kids, Zach. No more fucking kids. No, you got to do it. No but kids. clearly you have like prodigies oh, she can't in, have your, kids. in your genes. She can't have kids. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> no vasectomy turned, needed. When she turned to like a certain age, you can get the walls of your uterine lining burned so you don't have a period Let's anymore. Let's cut to a clip. <laughs> no, I'm to once I'm past having kids, I'm doing this shit because she doesn't get a period, even though she's like about to hit menopause, but like for like the last 10 years, she hasn't had a period or something. That's um, good. Which is what? lovely. I, what is the, who found that process well, out? Yeah, but it's also, like, it's like a, a treatment you get for like ovarian cancer. Cause she's like, it's really prominent in my family, just cancer in general. So you uh, kind of take it as a preventative measure. Yeah. So they wish they were Pisces family, but they weren't. <laughs> um, they go in there with like a blowtorch or like a, yeah, or uh, like kinda, project honestly. orange or just whatever's around. <laughs> You know, Sometimes when you go they to, just heat their hands a lot. <laughs> when you go to like a fancy restaurant and then the waiter comes over and just yeah. does creme brulee. And she's just like this. <laughs> Zach. What? It's, you know, it's fondue night. Um, oh, crap. Okay, so ba back on back on the time slate. Okay, mm. so you get, when do you move out to LA? Oh, I moved out to LA when I was like probably like 28. I've been here 20 years. Okay, so, okay, let me back up then. You're in New York. What, what are you in... What is keeping you alive? What's keeping you inspired at that point in your life? So I did two years of Saturday Night Live. And then at the end of the two years, I got offered to uh, like work at MTV and, oh, and, nice. and write, write things for the hosts there oh, and wow. stuff like that. And at the time, that was like really, really exciting to be paid as a writer. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Stuff. So I left SNL, which was like, eh, I was, I was torn about that. Yeah. But, um, and then, yeah, so I worked at MTV and then I started performing and started doing stand up and stuff like that and I got a, I got a couple TV shows and then I got a TV show on a network called VH1. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. VH1. And it was like a sketch show with um with a lot of funny people like Pat Oswalt and Michael Showalter oh, and cool. Michael Ian Black and and it was all parodies about music. Uh yeah, so it was like I don't know. It was okay. There was a couple funny things on Very, there. Very like niche like show, you know. It was like I would play like John Lennon. Mm -hmm. I would play like Jim Morrison. I would play uh, Oasis. Like those were the bands of the time. Yeah, so it was were like you, all parodies. Were you kind of were you longing to be a certain person or have a certain social status in the entertainment? Like, did you want to be the face of things? What? Why were you? I, I'm just trying to break down why you wanted to be an entertainer basically, and why you were still pursuing it over this long. Cause you had some kind of fire in you. Yeah. I, I just really love making people laugh. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's simple enough. It's like really therapeutic. It's just like, it's the best. Like even, even just hanging out, like if, if I'm on 
if we're like not laughing during the day, like, I don't know, there's no point, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah that, it, and it's, it's, it's nice. Cause it's comedy is all I care about. Yeah. Even at this age, like, and I love my kids, obviously I care about them first, but then after that, like, that's all I care about. I just watch comedy, study jokes. <laughs> I, I, I bless you. Yes. I love podcasts with comedians. I think oh, this, yeah. this is a great time. Cause I can see like all my favorite comedians in podcasts, like Tom yeah. Segura and oh, Bert, love Tom Spay, Segura. those are our favorites. Bert yeah. Kreischer, um, well, we go to the, like the improv in the, or no, the, the laugh factory, factory a yeah. lot in comedy store. I love doing that. It's a great way to spend a weekend or like just a, a night, like an hour or two, go see some really, yeah. really funny comedians. She did a movie with Bobby Lee not too long ago. It was oh, hilarious. You did? Bobby yeah. Lee, Eric Griffin. He lives across the street um, from me. Oh, does he? Does nice. he really? Yeah. Ho- they're funny to him and Eric Griffin on the set. I could have sworn they were doing lines of coke. <laughs> could have sworn it. They really? were just like so energized and so like throwing improv in and out, like yeah. changing lines, changing scenes, like pivoting everything. It was like honestly really, really Eric beneficial Griffin's to really watch. Funny too. And it was he, really beneficial to, to see firsthand because that was the first feature film I ever did. Uh-huh. It was with him, Sean Astin, Mira Solvino, and just like seeing wow. that at Jim O'Hare from Parks and Rec. Just like seeing them all work together in the same room and like, I don't know, it was just like there was nothing better and nothing more beneficial for me as like a really, really young actor to just be like, Whoa. And And being in comedy, there's nothing, you, you know this, there's nothing more intoxicating than being with funny people and you guys create a bit or you guys create a game where it's just over and over and over oh, and then you guys, keep when going. you guys just sync up. Yeah. Um, those are those are kind of my favorite moments. Okay, so you're in New York, um, you're doing the entertainment thing and then, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's working out, I'd say more than most people, but you're still, you wouldn't say you've made it yet, quite yet. No, um, no, it's always up and down. You would like get a show, have a lot of money, and then the money would be gone. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got married. And it was and, all gatekeepers back then. Like you yeah, didn't have a yeah, chance yeah. of, yeah. Uh, Oh, and you, I know what would happen. You would, I wanted to create stuff. I wanted to make, have a sitcom or something. So every year I would like sell a, a script to mm-hmm. Fox or NBC or something like that. And then it would come down to it and it would always be the same fuck script. It's my life. Yeah. <laughs> and, and every time it would come down, they'd be like, well, we're going to get uh, Jason Biggs to play you or something like that. But you were selling the scripts? Yes, I was selling that's, scripts. That's yeah. What yeah. kind of, back then, what kind of money came with selling a script? You get like 50 grand for a script. Yeah, and that keeps oh. you going for it. That would keep you going a for a while. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then, uh, and then I just got sick of that. Oh, I know. And then I made a couple of made, made a couple movies. They both tanked. FML and yep. then Jason Nash is married. Yep. Yep. And I found that process to be really hard. What was? And long. And like, and I, and lots of times you would sell a movie to somebody and then they wouldn't make it and then they would just sit on it. Yeah. Um, what was kind of the vision or it's what made you want to make the movie? And then when you got into it, what was the transition of like, oh, this is what I don't really like to do. I liked making the movie. But at the time, there was, I saw the internet and I saw how immediate it was. Yeah. And it was just tough because it was like, I just wasn't making any money yeah, at, yeah. at the movies. And so they would say, okay, like, you know, here's $15,000, go write this script. And then you'd go write it. But that's like not enough for to live on for the year. Oh, no. Um, and then honestly, YouTube just came out of like desperation. Yeah. Honestly, it was just like, and it was, it was, it was probably the happiest time in my life because I always tell this to people like, you know, it's okay to like let go of, you know, maybe some kind of dream you have. Like mm-hmm. just just live your life and try to make money and be happy. Like that, and that was the fun part about YouTube because that was the first time where I was like, oh, I, I'm just not going to do anything else. Yeah. I'm just going to do YouTube, um, and I'm not going to try to write scripts. I'm not going to go audition, and that was the best decision I ever made. Just okay. to have like a simple life and a you know like just to I bo- think boil that, everything down. I think that's super like the rarity of you understanding the immediateness of the internet and social media right. was something that wasn't too popular back then. Like everyone, especially, especially like I 10 assume years your ago, peers probably yeah, looked down like, and like, Oh yeah. A yeah, lack yeah, of yeah, respect yeah, yeah. for they social media and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. But nowadays social media is like what books people now in these things. It's like where so many people look at things and go, Oh wow. Okay. I can see this, this person as potential exact. Like all of his videos are in my opinion, hilarious. And it really shows his comedic skills and his writing skills and everything. And then a casting director could see that and be like, Oh, they're hilarious. They've got I mean, so that's much how potential. I got a too. director attached to my movie. Yeah. Like that's it's exactly how he did it. Like it's just, it's just crazy. The power that this has, but back then the power wasn't there, especially even the higher ups in media were kind of looking down on it. But I think 
everyone knew it was kind of going that way, except for the people that didn't. And those were the people that were stuck in the old ways. So what was your first social media that you went on? Was that Vine or did you start on YouTube? Yeah, I was on Vine. And because I had- What year was that? I, I, I was like 2014. I had a movie called Jason Nash is Married with Busy Phillips that I had made with Comedy Central. And, uh, and it was like, no one was going to watch it. It was only going to air once on Comedy Central at midnight. Oh, wow. um, and then the rest would be VOD, like they would sell it. And, yeah. so, and I wasn't famous. No one knew who I was. And so I was like, oh, right, I'm going to just, I'll jump on Vine mm -hmm. really quick. Uh, just maybe I'll sell a few more movies and yeah. maybe I'll make like 500 bucks off the movies. Or yeah. a thousand I mean, bucks. Yeah. And um, I, <laughs> I was on Vine and I was like doing stupid sk skits on Vine. And then Brittany Furlon, who uh, was- Oh, is she married to Tommy Lee now? She's married to Tommy Lee now. Oh my gosh. But Brittany Furlon was huge on Vine. Uh -huh. And uh, she, I had known her because she dated a comedian that I, and I would see her at open mics. And she was always really sweet. And she was like really quiet. Like she would never say anything around really? the comedians. Yeah, she was young, whatever. Oh. Or at least that was my experience with her. And then I looked on Vine and I was like, oh my God. I'm like, this girl's really funny. And she's like <laughs> crazy out there and she'll do anything. And then I- I did some vines with her, and then the next day I had like a hundred thousand followers. Oh that was a God. lot back then too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like a hundred thousand was, was like the fast. million. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. Like, definitely. And I, I think that's crazy how that how that uh tra when that transition hit. Like back in twenty sixteen when I hit like a hundred k or one hundred fifty k, like that was huge. Like twenty seventeen when you hit like a hundred to two hundred fifty k, that was insane. Everyone was like, yes. "Oh well, you're Instagram famous. Like you are famous on Instagram." And then now it's like if you don't have a million plus it's like uh, our brand's gonna take you seriously or casting's gonna take you seriously i don't think not. that's true anymore i think that it's going the other way now i think if you, you have think? i think if you have like a hundred thousand followers that love you yeah i think you can oh do totally i think you can do great oh totally you know, like, but just in the perspective of like in the social eye when people view it they're like oh Oh, right, right, right. Well, I guess we're talking about two different things. You're talking about getting cast in a movie, and I think I'm talking about like yeah. brands and stuff. Because I've like, I mean, personally, because acting is still like a major thing of, of my life. Like yes. I've literally had castings be like, please don't send talent under 500K. Yes, I have. Heard. Okay. And that's really, that's really That's crazy. It's they, they, really don't, they don't do that. Oh, they totally do that. They're shooting themselves in the foot. Then. Oh, 100%. They're, they're, not they're, the they're not getting the best. They're not getting the best actors. They're 1,000% yeah. shooting themselves in the, put, in the foot, but like they don't understand that. It doesn't translate anyway. No, not at all. No one, no, no one's gonna go. But like one hundred percent, I've had that. Like I've, I've fully lost out on roles for followers, and I've had castings be like, "Don't send talent under five hundred k." What a world! It's insane. It's insane. You get a hundred thousand followers. Are you still married at this point? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is she? What is your wife thinking? Because <laughs> <of? laughs> she's a producer, correct? Yeah, yeah. She's a TV producer. So was she a TV producer at the time? Yeah, yeah, big and one. Yeah, so, doing good. Yeah, so I assume, you know, you're trying this internet thing that's very new <laughs> and a, a lot of people in the industry are looking down on it. I'm not saying she did, but... Yeah, I would go to parties and stuff and they'd be like, uh, why are you on an app that's like, thir has 13 year olds on it? And I'm like, ah, uh, well... You're like, just wait for four years. Yeah. Just don't understand. But it's I not could, a phase. I used to live in this cul-de-sac and there was a ton of, you know, all the families lived in the cul-de-sac. And I, I when, and when I started Vine, I could see that all the kids, that's all they did. Yeah. They were, and I was like, there's no way. I was like, there's no way this won't be something or turn into like something big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I was still married. And, you know, I mean- you know, I got divorced. I had, then I got divorced, and or, or do, how did you break it down to her? Like, I'm gonna pursue, I'm gonna pursue the six second thing, kind of like our bedroom experiences. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just told her I was like, I'm, I'm gonna do Vine. I think it's something, and she was pretty good about it. Yeah, she was pretty good about That's it. Great. She was like, Are you sure? Like, you can go make another movie or keep slugging it out, and and then and, and I was like, Yeah, but I can make money right now, and and that was just what I chose. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. And I, maybe I'll make another movie someday. I don't know. But your passions are still just as high for the online creation or do you do you ever feel slugged down if it's kind of a, a job that I have to get through or are you still- No, I love it. You love it? I, I, I absolutely love it. To, to be able to make anything or just to be able to come here and do something and be able to have an audience, it's, what, it's, it's unreal. What, what gets you the most excited? I don't know if it's views, if it's a really good bit, if it's- uh, a really good bit. A really good bit where you just know it. It's like, I created that. It's not even an ego thing. It's just the feeling of it. Yeah. It's, it's that you have that high for uh, like a day after, especially like if I did something with, with Dave or like, um, 
you know, like Ilya or Todd, like, you know, we're all friends. And if you get something really good, you're just like, oh, that's awesome. Do you have any that come to the front of your mind where you kind of thought about it a little longer than others where you're like, this was such a, a fun bit? Yeah, like being buried alive was, was <laughs> great. Like, I, I love the ones where he just casually is like, yeah, being buried alive, being shot and then died and then brought back <laughs> yeah. to life. Getting, getting through that bit and and being like the knowing that I I did it like I physically was able to do it and that's that's the tough thing is like stuff is presented to you and you're like okay can we do this and then when you get through it you're like oh wow you know and it's very rare that like that's very rare that stuff works ninety uh, percent of it doesn't work yeah yeah you know do and you, um, do you have a um, a high tolerance for embarrassment because you have because mm -hmm. a lot of his stuff that he's <laughs> done. Mean, look at me, Zach. No, <laughs> you look great. I was, look I was very 50 put years together. old talking to a bunch of 21 year olds. <laughs> I was like, you look fantastic today. Oh, thanks. Uh, no, but uh, I remember just the Carmelita bits of like in the airport. I, first of all, hilarious. Some of the funniest, if you haven't seen the Carmelita bits, I got to oh show you, hilarious. But I just didn't know if in the back of your mind, you're like, Oh man, what am I doing here? Yeah, no, I don't have any embarrassment. I love that because when you when you because that's why it seems so authentic when it was coming out of you. Oh, good, because you, you didn't seem like you were like ah, I shouldn't be here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I you know two things. One, when you bomb enough as I have in stand up, yeah. uh, it it's nothing. If you bomb in front of five hundred people, it creates like such a a strength inside of you. Um, that's, yeah. And uh, and so I never have a problem with that. And the other thing is my kids. Yeah. Uh, so every time I don't want to do something, I'm like, oh, I have to feed those fucking kids. Yeah. <laughs> did, did they That's ever pretty get good motivation? Yeah. Did they ever get embarrassed by anything? You're like, they're like, Dad. Yeah, no, but they're they definitely like checked out on it. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, we don't want to have anything to do with it. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And which, which, which I get. My, my son, my son likes to do stuff. She doesn't, she doesn't like to do it, but she's yeah. like her own person. She like wants to be. How old's your daughter? She's 13, but like she's as mature as you are. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, probably more so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, she's just great. And, uh, but she wants her own thing, which I get. And entertain, or like, what, what is she interested in at the moment? <laughs> she loves Snapchat. Does she? Snapchat? Yeah, they, all really? her friends, wow. they yeah. love. That's, that, I, always keep, I always get a good idea of like what's going on out there by yeah. the kids. And I'm like, all their friends are on Snapchat. That's all they that do. That is all people, like I get it because at that age, I w that was the only thing I was using to communicate. I seriously don't think I've opened the app in months now. Really? Well, like I, the, the cool kids are doing it, so you need to get back on. I open it and like I might post on my story real quick just to kind of keep being active, but like, I don't remember the last time I actually used it to communicate with people. That's crazy how like, I don't know, I guess my, you mature on your socials as well as you do in real life because I was yeah. like, that was the only thing I used to use to communicate with people. And now it's like, if you're not calling me, I don't want to talk to you. Right. You get here, you start doing Vine. Um, people, you're collaborating, the following is growing. And then when were you able to look at it as a career? When did maybe the first brand will come in? And you're uh, like, oh, this might this is starting to work. Yeah, Vine, Vine was interesting. They they asked me to um, they someone called me maybe and was like, oh hey, we wanted you to go to Mike Tyson's mansion in Las Vegas. <laughs> okay, on Saturday, that's awesome for fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, and, and I was like, what? I would have paid fifteen hundred. Yeah, 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 seriously. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, what do I have to do? They're like, just go there and just make like three vines. And I was like, okay. And they they put me on. And I remember I had like a thing I had to do with my ex wife. And I was like, I, I, I'm going to this thing. And she's like, oh, but we have, you know, this. And I was like, I know, I know, but I need the money. Like we need the money, like I need to go. And, uh, and so I went and I got there and I was like, okay, what do I have to do? And they were like, just make mines. That's all you have to do. Just make whatever you want. And, um, and that was it. I made $1,500. I couldn't believe it. And yeah. then I, and then I made, I did pretty good on Vine. I made, I made quite a bit of money, but then it died. Yeah. It went away. So the same day that Vine died, my, uh, the same day my movie came out and didn't do well, <laughs> Vine ended. It was a tough week for you. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was really? a tough day, yeah. And I called Brandon Calvillo and I was like, because you know I'm older. And I was like, I was like, yo, what's going on? <laughs> what do you mean Vine's going away? And he's like, dude, we've all known this. <laughs> and he's I'm like, like well, I didn't get CC'd in. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, dude, it's been dying for months. He's like, it's obviously going to go away. And I was like, no. And so then I was stuck and I had nothing because that, that was like 3 million people erased. How was the mental health at that point? That's crazy. Did, did you take it tough? I mean, you? I'm always crazy even when things are good. Um, but yeah, it, it was, I was, took it pretty tough. And then I was just like, okay, I don't know. What, so then I started installing speakers for a living and I would go to trade shows with my friend and that was really great. 
And then I started to. Did you get recognized a lot as like? Aren't no, you not, okay. not at speaker shows. Really, it's not at speaker shows. <laughs> not my demographic, uh, believe it or not. Not at the pioneer booth. <laughs> um, you should get back into it. Yeah, and and I really enjoyed like working manual labor. Yeah, why yeah, is that? I, I, I because like you could you know you don't have to think, you don't have to create anything, you don't have to think of anything funny. Yeah, and that, uh, that so, was a nice blissful thing back in the day when I worked at like a restaurant or something. Right. It's like when you leave the restaurant, you're not thinking of like, okay, um, done. Is I should bring two range the next time because I'll like it better. It's just like whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, if I'm sure, even now, you're just constantly thinking of new things because you've got to stay on it. Okay, so you go. Okay, how did you go from stereos to? Because uh, I didn't have a job. So I was just like, I didn't have Vine, so I couldn't make any brand deals. The, the app was deleted. Gotcha. Um, and then, so I was like, okay, what do I do? Do I make another movie? And then I- um, Did you have an Instagram following? Not really, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm like sitting in my apartment and I'm like, oh fuck, I'm divorced. And I put on David's vlogs and I started watching them. And I was like, wow, I was like, damn, this, I was like, and I knew David a little bit. I was like, oh, I was like, you know what? Good for him. I was like, he yeah. fucking figured it out. He figured out something brand new. He's got something with all his friends. All his friends were funny. And that was back when he had like Liza and Alex. And yeah. like, I thought they were, those two were really funny. And yeah. obviously Zane and Heath. And, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And I watched, I probably watched like 25 vlogs in a row. And I was like, that's awesome. And then I just went out that night and I did stand up, and I was about to go on stage and I had all these jokes and I was like, ah, this won't work because everyone in the audience is like 21. Yeah. So I just went up there and I started fucking making fun of everybody in the audience. Like, so yeah. I, was, I was like, well, it, at the time it was millennials and I was like, you're all fucking spoiled. <laughs> you're the fucking worst. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I'm offended. Like shit like that. Yeah. And, um, and I got off and that, and that was when I met David. It was really, really fucking weird. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. and then next day you guys were filming. Yep. And then how and every day after that, how soon wow. after that did you start to make money on, on YouTube? Like, do you start your own channel immediately? I mean, da David's my savior. You know, it was like, I was like riding around with him every day. And the great thing about David is he's, he's like very, very, very grounded in the sense of like money and friends and, and feelings and like it, it just everything. You can talk to him about anything. He's actually like very sensitive, so it's really fun. And he would just be like, are you broke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very just and I'd, be like, I'd be like, yeah, like I owe like $80,000 in taxes. Oh, shit. And he was like, what? He was like, oh, he's like, oh shit, dude. He's also so blunt, you know how blunt he can be. Yeah. He's just like, boy, that's not good, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you're a fucking idiot. How did you manage that? I'm like, I know, I know, I know, I know. And then he, one day we were riding in his car and he was just like, well, why don't you just come into YouTube with me? And I was like, I was like, I, how? I was like, how could I do that? I'm 43 years old. And he was like, just make a channel. Just make a channel. And, yeah. I, and I was like, no, Dave, David, no fucking way. Like, this, <laughs> just no, it's so dumb. And, and he was like, oh, well, how much do you need to make a month to live? And I was like, um, 5,000. I need $5,000 a month. And he, he just, he like took a second. He's like, that's easy. He's like, I can do that. He's like, you can do that. And I was like, no, no way. And so then I just did it. And it took me, like three months and then I did it. I made five thousand a month. And then I made and then and then at one point maybe like I made thirty five thousand a month. That's whole yeah. like not not too maybe like six months later. And at that point you're just like how, like how but did the, I get here? Like, and it's it's tough. It's tough to it's tough for me to process it because it's it's all because I was working with him. So it's it is kind of strange. You're like, Oh, it's just because I'm working with him. But I, I did you know, try my best. And I thought I did bring a lot to the table too, because I oh, had, definitely. I had like 20 years of jokes that didn't ever go anywhere. were never used. Yeah, I, I, I had notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of stuff. I don't like when the outside thinks that way. It's like, oh, you're only this because you got platformed by someone else. When in reality, this is new media. This is, this is friends, the TV show, right? But it's on this. That's this generation's friends. Like a lot of people yeah. will go back and watch David vlogs in the past, and you were cast as a character on a very hit TV show. Like right. it was all I mean, improv. You guys have your own IMDb page, you know? Yeah, for, that was wild when I saw that. I was like, wow, IMDb page. Yeah, because I like somebody at IMDb clearly has the same thought. It's just like this is literally a sitcom. You've always wanted a right. sitcom. Right. You guys are like your own individual characters. Like, yeah, like say you were on Everybody Loves Raymond. You wouldn't think, and you were no, big, you wouldn't. Yeah, think that. you, you were a huge Brad character Garrett on it. Got it at that himself. Yeah, yeah. or yeah. you're a huge character. You're like you wouldn't say to yourself, "Oh, I'm the other. Well, thing, I'm only here because Raymond's good." The other thing that pisses me off too is when people say like, "Oh, you ride David's dick," and obviously that would piss anyone off. And and it's like the truth is. He's my he's my friend, or, yeah. or someone will say, "Oh, David tells you what to do." No, David doesn't tell me what to do. My first thought is, 
how is this going to affect David? He's yeah. he's like he's like a fucking he's family to me. Yeah. So everything that we do, same thing with Zane and Heath. Like I would never do anything that's going to fucking hurt Zane and Heath. And and so we're all connected. We're all friends. And unfortunately, like like what you do or what you say affects everybody. And so you like, and I want to think about that. I want friends. When I watch the videos, I, my favorite part of it is like, is that like, I watched this video Susie Antonian did, you know, Susie? Yeah. She, she has this Susie series, is, I love She her. has this series called make me laugh. It's so brilliant. I couldn't believe she thought of it. I was like, this is such a fucking good idea. <laughs> Cause she loves to laugh. Do you have to go? And, and, uh, and my, my, the best part of watching it is like, I'm really friends with her. Yeah. Like I'm really love her, you know? And that makes everything so special. And that's why I love YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because if I was on a sitcom, it'd be like, all right, see you in fucking, see you in the fall. Yeah. And I wouldn't really, maybe I'd have like a good friendship with them. But when you're like creating together and you're really friends, it's like to have that, it's the best. No, that's um, what I found in your friend group. I, I initially, we had Mariah on and Mariah invited us over and we kind of got to know um, um, Heath and Zane a, a little bit. And those were kind of the first people. I'm, I, I, I'm very tight knit. I'm very close. I'm, right. very, I'm very loyal. I've, I, a lot of people in LA are very fake. I'm from Georgia. I just like grounded people. And your guys as a group um, immediately just was super kind. And, and once we all clicked, it was... We, we mostly hang out with Zane and Heath and Mariah, but just, and Ilya, but just those core of who I initially started knowing are just very down to earth people. I see why everyone clicks because it is a family. Everyone actually cares. No one's chasing anything or feels like someone's higher than the other person. It's like somebody might get more views, but it, it, at the end of the day, it's, you're thankful that they're doing that. And, and everybody really like looks out for each other. Like mm -hmm. and if you need something, they're there at they're the drop there. of a hat. And when someone asks me for something, in that group, I'm, I'm there yeah. at the drop of a hat, yeah. yeah. And that really, I think, shows like through your guys' content. You oh, know? good, even, good. Even though it's so. like comedy and it's very lighthearted and stuff, it's just like you can tell. And I've, and that, I've noticed that I don't want to get into any of like the drama part because it's been talked to in, in nauseam um, just by everyone overanalyzing everything. But um, when things were going on, on your guys' podcast, I noticed just how much care you had for every single situation because all of them were your friends and are your friends. Yeah. And it's it's very tough when two people are feuding and you might you feel like you're a little ripped apart. Yeah, to be in the middle expect because i mean you're mm. you're playing mediator at that point and it's yes it's just a little it's tough because you care about both feelings and you care about all opinions and you can see both sides a little bit you yeah know? that's a without saying too much that's a terrible terrible situation yeah yeah no we'll we'll, we'll skip past it yeah. you guys have talked about it enough and it sucks it's it just sucks it's just like it's it... and then okay so you're on this timeline okay now we're going back to this Okay, you started making the thirty-five thousand. Dude, and Jeff. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, actually, can we stick with this for a second? This is very therapeutic. I have to make a phone call. <laughs> and here he is. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> Things start going well. Everything starts picking up. And then when did his? When did it go insane, David? Are you getting a movie deal? She honestly might be. Yeah, seriously. She had a really big Is audition it, yesterday. Did she? Yeah, and- uh, Well, let's put that on the podcast. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, okay, so when did it, because you guys went to like a nuclear status at one point where it felt like the Beatles when you guys went oh. somewhere. What, oh, did you I get it? No. Put, You're on, put hold. on hold? And hold is better than pinned or not better than pinned? It's kind of the same thing. What's the difference between pinned and hold? Yeah, the same thing. That sounds sexual. Sorry. I didn't <laughs> well, you just think about her mom again. She's like, okay, I pin her down, then I hold her. No, I want you to pin me tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just means that they've like asked for my availability. And I told you, you had a fantastic audition, didn't okay, you? Okay, so what you're, that has what, happened so many what you're going through right now. I couldn't do. Oh, it's so stressful. It's the worst. Okay, like I'll I'll speak openly about it. Like I, the amount of time, I mean, you guys have seen it happen to me like what, three times now with major things. And I have lost out to the same girl. And I just, you know what sucks? Oh. I, I just got invited to the screening of the movie or the premiere of the movie that oh. I lost out to. And it's like the same girl that I lost out to senior year and uh, well, honor society. Yeah, well she booked Spider-Man. And so I was happens. like, <laughs> She's also Australian, isn't she? I don't think she is. I think or she is. Might. She? I think yeah, she is. She is, yeah. Oh, yeah. she is, right, because she did the look, she I'm gonna be honest. I'll I'll be honest where honesty is needed. 
she played both of those roles better than I ever could have. So like she deserves those You guys those have complete roles. different looks though. If this is completely a Completely different look, looks and like completely different ways of acting. So um, No, this is the, the most stressful part. This is why I hate auditioning It's well. really do, stressful. Do you know Brandon Calvillo? Yeah. Oh yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, it's funny how it's we. It's funny know how him. we met. Actually, he's he's always trying to make movies and stuff. You should like. Really? You should DM him and be like, "Yo, I'm an actor." Like, because he, he. Yeah, we, we. He was. was he he made a short. He, he made a yeah. short. Um, it's so good. Really? It's, it's, and um, he won't put it out because he wants to go to festivals. Oh, I thought it was the one. Okay, so he, no, he posted this TikTok the other day. This might be different. Where he, it was like him confronting a homeless man or homeless man confronting him. It was done a few years ago. Do you remember that one? It was. It's really, really. Good, and I can't imagine how really? it's just progressed to this point. Yeah, oh, wow. he's really talented. You should just link up with him because he's yeah. like, I know he's he's trying to make something now, and it's a very this is a very stressful it. part of the job. That I actually love auditioning, and I love I love this process. I really do. Uh -huh. But it's now that at this point that I start to stress, and I'm like, oh, fuck. And then you like you you get your hopes up because I have this thing in auditions. I'm like when we were doing in-person auditions, I used to have this thing, just leave it at the door. So the minute you pass that threshold of that audition room, you fucking forget it and you just like leave it alone. Cause like you can't think about it. Otherwise you're just going to kill yourself thinking about anything different you could have done. And I have bombed hundreds of auditions and I've done phenomenal auditions. Like I've done nice. hundreds of them, but it's at this point, it's like when you get down to like the wire of situations that you're like, how, how would my life turn out if I got this thing? Mm -hmm. What would happen? Like, how would this be? Da, 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 da. And you start thinking and thinking and thinking. And then when it doesn't happen, it's an even more intense letdown. And you're like, oh, fuck. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, how are you doing financially? Are you, just, are you just like, do you need this to live? Um, no. 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 Okay. No. So you have like other income. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I okay, don't. So that, I don't live off of my acting. I live off socials. Great. Okay. So right there, great. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucking far and above and beyond. Yeah. Ninety nine percent of the world. One hundred percent. You can pay your bills. Yes. So the next thing is, just go in, train. Don't even think about it. Do the best you can. Yeah. And don't even worry because yeah. it, it's it will come. And when I was your age. I couldn't see it. People would say to me all the time, like, don't worry, it'll come. Unfortunately for me, it took like 25 years. <laughs> but it did. But it came. But it's, it did come. It's it persistence came. and consistency and like always being interested. Yeah. Is yes. what I found. Yes. I just like, I yes. have to be interested. The feeling I get, like the way I know that this is what I'm meant to be doing is the genuine love I feel when I am on set is like mm -hmm. nothing else. Oh, I'm like, I could yes. be here forever. Ever. Yes. You could tell me you needed me to shoot for 28 hours straight. Would I be exhausted mentally and physically at the end of it? Yes. But would I absolutely love every second of it? 1000%. You could tell me that I'm going to work every single day on set for the next 30 years and I would fucking scream about it. I'd be like, yes, I get, yes. Like I love this shit. And why can't you create that for yourself? I can. I totally can't. Right, well, I can. just started getting into the production side of things. I actually just directed and produced my first show. Oh, amazing. Um, which was really, really stressful, but like it just, it awoke something in me that I'm like, oh shit, I really can start to do the creative process and I don't have to be at the mercy of the gate holders anymore. That's why like, I've been trying to preach I don't have to, mm. I don't have to like have the. I've been fucking telling you. Yeah, I'm like, I don't have to do this like, you stressful have all the thing. Connections in like, the world, just make it, just do it. But I like don't have to do this stressful thing of like, am I gonna get it? Am I not gonna get it? Am I not like I can just be like, okay, cool, this would be awesome if I got it, but like I can fucking go do this shit myself. So good, yeah. Oh, um, all things good podcast. All I, good I, things. I, all good things. All good things. And Nash Nation, yes. Okay, I, are we wrapping up? No, we're good. We, no, we just. We he get, just likes to. I don't remember if I said it at the beginning, so I want to make sure I hit it hard, and we're gonna have it in the description. And it's this new podcast, it's fantastic. He's got all the comedians, and I'm actually thoroughly excited. But back to the interview. Yes. I would also um, like to play that game. Oh, we will. We will. Yeah, we will. We will. Okay. okay. I got to get through this timeline. Sorry. First. Sorry. I'm on a. I'm on a. Bing, bing, yeah, boom. we're really doing it. Okay, so when when did the Beatles start happening? The Beatles? I don't know. It it's all blur. Like I don't really remember. I guess. Okay, well, when? Oh, I know. They brought us to they brought us to like the Super Bowl, or something, and we like walked into an arcade, and and uh, somebody somebody some some brand paid for us to go to the Super Bowl, you had to meet J Lo or whatever, and um, <laughs> just casual, casual or whatever. And, uh, you know, and, and 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 the Super and, Bowl. and that when we when you got off the bus, it was like, oh. Oh, this is this is legit. Yeah, is, yeah. Like you just, I just didn't. It never felt like anything. It, 
the views don't maybe because I don't look at views or it, <coughs> it never felt like anything uh, like that's even, the healthiest thing I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this space. Like if you if David gets a video that has twenty million views, like I don't know, can you process that? I can't. No, no, no. not at all. When okay. Our TikToks, when the, like one of your TikToks has like 45 million views or something, maybe more at yes. this point, I can't process that shit for anything. No. Not a thing. Or like one of our one of our biggest videos ended up amassing like 150 to 200 million views over like a bunch of meme pages and it went like viral. Yes. And like, it's one of those videos that people like still to this day will be like, you're from that Capri Sun video. And I'm right. like- that's so weird to think about. It's like, how have so many beings, individual beings and eyes seen this video of me that I just randomly filmed in the middle of a genuine argument that we were having? We just got, I just got really lucky. Like, it was just like, what? What, what was your also feelings? Also, because I was older, it was like, oh, how, how, how is this happening? <laughs> what was your feelings of like, when the first people started coming up to you and like saying hi, wanting a picture? I, I mean, I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously. I I mean, yeah. No, now though, definitely, cause you're used to it. But like the very first ones where you like, you want to take it. I mean, honestly, it's like, it's like, uh, it's a dream come true. It's like, oh yeah. my God, like it, it not, not for my own ego, but also just for like, to be able to- It's also to, a testament to your work. I, I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess. I mean, I don't think much of the work, but, but, uh, but, uh, it just just to brighten somebody's day or just to get a chance to talk to somebody yeah. is so cool. Like yeah. I love to talk to people. I love to like find out who they are, where yeah. they're, oh, where you're from, you know? So like, yeah, I, I love that part of it. And um, do you think, cool. do you remember your first interaction with somebody that came up to ask you for a photo? No, I don't think so. I Jared, do you? Yeah, it was in a Popeye's. Was it? Yeah, in Chicago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, did they, what did they say? Uh, it was right after we had done a video. Um, so I used to work in the film industry uh -huh. and I hated it because it was just ridiculously long hours. And I was bottom tier of the totem pole, you know, uh -huh. so I was just doing all the bitch work. And, uh, and I finally quit had like a mental breakdown and then we did a video. I wanted to buzz my head. Uh -huh. And so he made a, he's like, okay, well, if you're going to do it, let's make a TikTok about it. And that was like one of our first few like viral videos. And uh, so I buzzed my head and then this girl came up in a Popeye's in Chicago when I was visiting my friend. She's like, I just saw the TikTok where you buzzed your head. She's like, you guys are really funny. And I was like, I, at that time, I, I wasn't doing social media at that right. point. I was just in his videos. Right. Um, but that was pretty much it. She was just like, yeah, you guys are really funny. And I was like, that's so weird that somebody, you know, so across you the know. country that I don't know. One of kind of my favorite people in, in the encompassing all of your ecosystems videos is your mother. I oh, think yeah. she was one of, at least on camera, just the sweetest human beings. And I'm sure off camera uh, I've ever seen. And what did it feel like to deliver that car to your mom? Like, you cause, it, your cause it wasn't car? just that you're oh, giving yeah. her a car. It was, it was, you almost proved something. Greatest, you greatest know? moment of my life. To, we oh. just bought her like a, we bought her like a car and uh, or she had like the worst car. My, my mother's the best. Like she's, um, she's like the best person to talk to. She can talk to anybody. She can literally talk to somebody and figure out like their problems and like like five minutes and make somebody feel better. She's just the best. And so, yeah, we, we went, David and I went to Boston, like I'm going to buy her a car. And uh, we got there and she, <laughs> we're like driving over. What were we saying? I can't remember. We told her some lie. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's tough to lie to your mom. And then when we got- You always know. How do they always know? No, she didn't know. She didn't know. And then we, we gave her the car and it was really funny. We got her like a Mercedes and it was kind of like a grandma Mercedes. And, um, <laughs> and David came in and he was like, uh, he was like, I, I'd already paid for the grandma Mercedes. And David came in and he started looking at this really like sporty, <laughs> fucking sick, like kind of tricked out black, crazy rims. And he's like, he's like, yo, this is sick. He's like, he's like, you should get this for your mom. And I was like, like, Dave, my mom wouldn't want that. And my mom overheard us and she was like, no, I'll take this one. <laughs> so she got this sick Mercedes that she still has. And, and that was, that was really cool. That was probably top, top five. Oh yeah. I Number mean, one, to maybe. see both of you guys. And in the video, she says, you know, I love the car, but I'm, I'm more happy that you can afford it. Oh, oh yeah. She was so excited for you yeah. to be able to do that for her. <laughs> yeah. You know? She's, she's awesome. You, yeah, I'll, I'll introduce you to, to her when she comes out. Yeah, I mean, she's, she, she seems wonderful. Yeah. And, um, I, I, she's, she's, uh, I'll give you a quick story about her. She was, 
<laughs> Wyatt has roommates at music school. And so all weekend long, she was like, we got to do something for Finn. We got to do something for Finn. Like Wyatt's ra random roommate. Oh. <laughs> and Wyatt's like, he's fine. He's Finn, fine. Finn doesn't need anything. And then I guess he's like gluten-free and sugar-free. So my mom's like, what about cookies? And he doesn't eat cookies. That sounds like a music school student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. So yeah. So that's the kind of person she is. That's, oh, that's, that's really, really sweet. sweet. And I love that anytime that she's in the videos, she goes along with the bit. Um, mm -hmm. Like obviously everybody knows when David married your mom. Yeah. This, but you could just see that was the time of her life. She's like, what are we doing? She and we're had, doing it hard and fast. Yeah. She had the time of her life. Yeah. Did they was, actually get married like legally? Yeah. It was a big pain in the ass. They had, <laughs> they, they oh, had, they fully like signed document. The marriage was um, real and that wasn't the problem, but the divorce <laughs> oh my gosh. Was, was really lengthy and a lot of documents. She, she didn't want to add really? another divorce to the- yeah, yeah. it wasn't her. Yeah. It was just like, you know, getting it done correctly. Yeah. And stuff. That's so funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's David, man. He, he just goes all the way. He's the best. You know? He's like, yeah, He's fuck it. We'll, we'll really get married. Okay, we'll, we'll get to, I had a couple of things from Joe wanting me to ask, but okay. But, but before we Joe. get there. Yeah. Well, Joe. <laughs> I'm getting a break from Joe. I, <laughs> How is Joe here? <laughs> He's exactly. always around. I, I texted him. I was like, hey, do you have anything I should say for Jason? And he just, he just came back with ha 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 and oh, then boy. like listed stuff. Here we go. Okay, so before that, okay, so you go there, everything's um, going well. And I again, I don't want to highlight any of the the darker stuff, but when when I mean whatever, I'm an open book. Whatever okay, you want so ask. so things kind of transcended in in a negative way for the group and mm -hmm. some things kind of fell off in in a way that no one was expecting because of mm -hmm. certain situations. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of wondering how you not in this moment, not thinking about your friends, because I know that's what you normally do, and I know you've talked about that's how you felt, but just you personally, how you felt of maybe your future, like be selfish in this moment of, of kind of how you were personally feeling during that time. Mm, you know, I knew it would all come to an end at some point, and yeah. I just didn't think it would come so uh, in such a big way. Yeah. And um, the great thing about this age is I've gotten so far that I know now that it's like, I, I wouldn't care if it went away. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't care that much about it. You know, it's like, I love to do it. If I'm able to do it, that's great. But I also would love to work at Starbucks. Yeah. You know, like I, I really would. And it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't define me in any way. It's just like, oh, great. I can go out and make videos and make money. Awesome. No, I think the you most know? integral thing I've taken from this talk so far is kind of your lack of ego and your enthusiasm about life, no matter what the avenue is. So that's, that's definitely admirable. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, things start to come around, get kicked back up. And um, was the excitement back when, when you saw like the vlog was happening for the first time? Like, what was your reaction when were you thrilled to get back into it? Or you're like, I, I gotta do this every day again? Like what was going uh, on there? Yeah, I was, I was thrilled to get yeah. back into it. And, um, but it wasn't the same. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't the same. It's just like we had, uh, he, he had had done it all. Yeah. He really had, he had done it all. And it was just like, okay. And he, he tried for a while and his new style was, it was great. It was awesome. And I was willing to keep going with him to, you know, keep making shit, but he just stopped. Yeah. And uh, we stopped the podcast and yeah, I was wondering, I hadn't yeah. seen anything oh, recently. I was wondering why you stopped the podcast. Cause I thought, I didn't know if you guys were just weren't enjoying it anymore. Or... Uh, yeah, we just, we just got, we just done it for like five years. Yeah. And Views? yeah. Oh, that stopped. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. Know it that. stopped for now. And then, but we might bring it back. We had a meeting the other day about bringing it back mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be on both sides. Like you gotta want to do it. Like you come here and you come here and you come here. And you like love it, right? Yeah. And you like want to do it, and you just have to want to do it. And um, is there a way? Because I think he's always wanted to do like a late show. Is there a way to kind of make it a bigger experience than just a podcast? If maybe he wants to turn into yeah, yeah, we would love to do that. I mean, that was what we were trying to do with the new set and stuff was yeah. to uh, to make him like the focus of the podcast, and I would be like the Andy Richter, yeah, which I, which was great for me. Like I really wanted to do that, you know. Yeah. I, I believed in him, and I still believe in him. I still think he's the funniest out of all of us, and I believe in his um, just his his way with people. He's just a got a he has that like the same thing that Jimmy Kimmel has. He, it's kind of a winning, you yeah. know, David thing. Um, but he's just not. I don't know. He's just not doing it right now. But that's not to say he won't. Do it. Ever, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like so young. He's only twenty five. Yeah, life's, well, that's a, crazy. life's a long time. Yeah, you know. 
So yeah. He's lived a lot for a 25 year old. So is that kind of why you started this new podcast? I kind of want to start yeah. where this idea came from and what are your hopes and goals for it? Is it, cause I see you're traveling quite a bit to do it, right? Yeah. Or? We have, we just decided that we would like get out and go see people in their environment and stuff. I oh, love that's, that. That's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. So we, we went to see uh, Portnoy and Montauk crazy house. Yeah. Nicest guy. Um, I was like struggling to find a place to shoot. We were like, went and like looking at hotels that morning and he was like, wow, just come over here and shoot it. And <laughs> I was like, really? Are you sure? Is that okay? So we had like a bunch of high noons. That podcast came out, came out great. We went to St. Louis, saw Nikki Glazer, went to New York City. Um, and so, yeah, we have- How many have you filmed so far? We shot five. Five? And yeah, we're going to shoot another five. And Anybody that you're really looking for? Like you don't have to say- well, I'm, Maybe I'm, I'm hoping uh, the next one is uh, Tim Dillon. So I'm trying oh, to- Oh, that, that would be fantastic. That would be my dream uh, yeah. guest. And I, and I mean that, you know, like maybe Leo DiCaprio and Tim Dillon. I think one of the really, I, I love analyzing how comedians, like new comedians are kind of getting their stuff out there. I think Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz would be there too. Yeah. He's, he's, he's unreal. He's the one that I kind of study the most to, to see how he's kind of changing the game. I want his new- um, his, His new set just came, came out. out. We got to watch that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, it just came out. We got to. But yeah, he just went complete. He bought his special back from Netflix. Yeah. Or whoever it was for whatever streaming service, and then I heard he uh, made like a million dollars on it. Yeah. I. I he mean, bought it back from them. Someone yes. texted. They him hadn't the, put it out. Yeah. He. Yeah. He put it out. Oh you no! Know, they wanted him to cut jokes. He's like, I'm not cutting jokes. He's like, I do these shows on the road. They kill every. Or I do these jokes on the road. They kill every time. I'm not cutting jokes. Everybody knows I'm joking. That people can stop being offended, and I'm going to do my jokes. And then um, he's and they're like, No, you have to cut this joke. He said, Okay. He bought it back, and then he, his fans are are backing him on his website where they get spent like fifteen dollars instead. Oh, that's so nice. He said he spent his like life savings to buy it back. Yeah, anyway. he's really good. He's like the one that's like killing it the most on YouTube right now. Yeah, I think, I think he's hilarious. Flagrant is like a really good podcast. Yeah, and his team is just his him. understanding of just the social world and how to use mm -hmm. it for his advantage. And every different just, platform, like he understands what's going to work on TikTok, what's mm -hmm. going to work on. He also has like a really intense respect for so many different cultures and beings. But in a way, like so much so that he's able to then incorporate that into his jokes and because uh, he mm -hmm. understands well said, yeah. how far he can push it, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Like he yeah. genuinely has such a respect that he's able to be like, I understand where I can push it and where I can't. Yeah. So here I go. He has another show with Charlemagne the God. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really good. Yeah. It's called Brilliant Idiots. Yeah. It's and, really good. And that is my favorite. Yeah. I, I they're, love they're that. Such a Those good two combo. together, unreal. Like that, the New York. I don't know. It just shines so through where they just like, anyway. Okay. Um, so this is what Joe had to say. Okay. Well, I was supposed to say this at the top. Um, uh, J oh, Jason Nash is here. We discovered him on Joe's third channel. Uh Oh, more Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, he said, uh, that, that is maybe your least favorite thing in existence. Uh Oh, more Joe. Zach, this motherfucker <laughs> he comes over to my house. I'm a busy guy. Yeah. I got kids and shit. He shows up at my house like three, four times a day. To I film it. And then sometimes, well, not three, five, like literally yesterday I saw him twice. He tried to come over this morning, but I had to come here. He's always on my fucking case. And then he has this idea that he's going to do this third channel with no cuts. And he's going to wear a little camera and film me for 10 minutes, right? And uncut. So it's like uncut me. So it's like me, like. <laughs> <laughs> With my gut, with like my gut out or whatever. And it's like not, it's not interesting. It's like me. And then, so he does it. He posts it. And then all the comments are like, Joe, this is brilliant. <laughs> and I'm like, well, this is I, true artistry. Yeah, true artistry. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, it's just. It, it's Isn't just, it weird what the internet loves? Yeah, yeah, it's a 15 minute video of no cuts, just us sitting around. It's like, like we're not even being funny. It's like Warhol filming himself sleeping for yes, eight hours. Yes, you exactly. Know? Yeah, he also wanted to know why do you um, dry shave in the car? Well, that's just for time and speed. <laughs> you really dry? You dry shave? Does that not hurt? In the car, that doesn't hurt. No, if I you didn't just do take it like an electric. He's, razor. he's built for tough. Oh, it's, it's an just... electric razor. No, no. what? <laughs> Straight razor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, been, he's been using the same one for years. His mom gave it to him. Was the first one he ever shaved with. Okay. I ever try to do that? My Italian hair. <laughs> just... I mean, I get a five o'clock shadow. Like, I guess I got to start trying something. Oh, the the last thing the I, I was watching uh, your highlights before this. Um, one of the funniest things I saw was you were talking. You guys were in Urban Outfitters, 
Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you want to tell the story really quick for for them, but this was one, yeah. one of my funniest things I've seen. Yeah, this is really funny because it makes me look like an idiot. <laughs> we, we were in Urban Outfitters. It was like me, Scott, and David. And and uh, and David was, we were just kind of like filming or whatever. And, uh, and I'm like knocking on the door. Scott's inside changing. And I'm like, and I'm pretending to be his mom. And I'm like, Scott, how does it fit in the butt? <laughs> How does it fit, Scott? Here, try these. Because that's what like, my mom yeah. does. She's always like throwing clothes over. Oh and then somehow I like- And you're like filming under the door, right? No, I wasn't oh, no, filming no, no. under okay. the door. I wasn't, fil- I wasn't filming under the door. And then somehow like my back was turned and Scott left the dressing room and someone else went in, oh, like shit. a random stranger. And then I go under the door <laughs> to try to be like, Scott, what are you doing in there? And then a different guy came out. <laughs> it was bad. And he, but he was fine. He was like cool about it. But th- the- the boys, they just fucking thought that was the funniest thing ever. It, it was, it was pretty, it pretty good. Because everyone funny. just, everyone I just, I think thought, I would have died. Everyone went wide eyed and just went towards the door. <laughs> um, okay, well, I think we. Is there anything you kind of wanted to talk about? I yeah, mean, we just have the not, just go to uh, my new website and the podcast, and that's what I'm working on. Mass Nation, yeah, that's it. All good things. Yep. Okay, and then we'll we'll leave on this game. Um, if you don't end up marrying Julie, Indiana, Julie, Indiana's mom, <laughs> we have we have a couple options you seem for you. Sorry that I that you brought it up. <gasps> no, I'm not. He'd be, a, he'd be a great stepdad. I'd I just, be chill. Do you know what <laughs> I think? Like, I'd leave you alone. Do you know what I think it is? I just I'm. I like to, I visualize everything in any situation. And I'm just literally visualizing you, because I spend Christmas at my grandparents' house. <laughs> oh, I'm literally <laughs> visualizing seeing you come to their glass front door, just being like, hey, Indy, come on in. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, do you I, know what I mean? All right, I won't fuck your mom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll work on a bit or something. Listen, Zach and I oh, won't yeah. buy tickets for ourselves, but we'll pitch in to send you to, to send Australia. Yeah, 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 I'll be there. <laughs> just for the bit. Okay, um, so... We saw which out of your friends in the vlog squad, I guess you could say, mm. would be the most attractive girl. So you're gonna rate each one on a oh, scale of one to, on a scale of one to ten. Okay, cool. And then um, the two highest scores we're gonna put next to each other, and then you're gonna choose out of those two who you'd uh, who you, who'd you shack it mm. up with. Now, first and most important. Oh, this is right? gross. They <laughs> they always say that you should set your standards by what the female version of you looks like. Okay. Right? So we took, took this wonderful picture. I think you look, look fine like a there. dead body floating on the river. <laughs> Jesus. And then, so uh, this is you. Wow. Way better. You look great. Way better. You look so, like you foster puppies. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Yeah. You're definitely a dog park yeah, mom definitely. there. Yeah, definitely. So out of 10, what like would you rate yourself? Uh, five. Okay. Really? Right yeah. I would have gone like as at least a seven. You think? Yeah, I think you look great. I You're definitely you did, better as a girl. I well, you're 49? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, mm. They look great for 49. <laughs> it's never too late. Uh, All right, so. Uh, I look like me. Oh. oh. So we have David. Davo. Okay. Good pick of Dave. We have Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've always said um, he's a pretty girl. Okay, one out of 10. Great teeth. And don't don't think about David now. Think I, about the little like D- Davina. <laughs> She's six and she looks like she has a good personality. So seven. Seven. Oh, seven. Okay. Nice. Seven. Seven with the personality. All right. Next we have Matt Cain. <laughs> Here we go. Dog not included. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like Miranda. Co- he looks like Miranda Cosgrove. <laughs> oh my God, he does. Wow. That's pretty hot. <laughs> Give him an eight. Oh okay. wow. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do, yeah. Remember, do you remember he's like six four still? Oh yeah, <laughs> and still has that voice. Yeah, <laughs> Jason, fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> that Texas draw. Oh, oh. oh. Hubba, here we hubba. go. He's like, I want this one now. Todd the bod. And boom. Oh, <laughs> that looks like Indy's mom. That's what I said. It does look like yeah. my mom. Oh, Todd's a Todd's a nine. Todd's a nine. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Keep going. Okay, <laughs> Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> oh my god, she she looks like everyone at the kebab store. <laughs> <laughs> Next, actually, actually, pretty. Oh, Scott, that's a good pick, of Scott. Damn, just wait, just wait. Whoa! Wow. Wait. That's when you said a nine. I was like, no, just wait. He looks just like his girlfriend. That's what I said. It looks like Jack. Oh, he does look like Jack. Wow, what a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I give him a 10. He actually beats Todd as a girl. That's crazy. Yeah. Who would have thought? But imagine him still with the, the, with muscle, the muscle arms. Yeah. The muscle just, just She could bench you in bed. All right, now we got Ooh, Ilya. Ill. 
<laughs> Honestly, not bad. Gorge. Looks like Natalie. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Oh. Yeah, I do see that a little. Wow. She seems like quirky with her shirt. Yeah, I'll give a seven. She knows a oh, good seven. joke. Seven. Next we have Joe. <laughs> Please don't. He's like already a zero, not even considering. <laughs> gorge. Whoa. I think Joe's kind of gorge. Bad. Joe's kind of hot. <laughs> Joe could get it. She looks like Demi Lovato. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe gets a six. Six. Yeah. That's funny. And then we oh, have Zane. No. Good old Zane. <laughs> Not <laughs> bad. That's a librarian's daughter. <laughs> a librarian's daughter. <laughs> yeah. Five. No, oh, he did not. He was not attracted to Zane. Heath. Um, I could not find uh, a photo that the AI would work with for Heath, so this is a really old photo. What happened to his beard? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Him and Zane kind of look similar as girls. Yeah. yeah, they do. It's that Florida. It's that Florida. <laughs> They're all related down there. I don't know about Heath as a. Heath has well, a it's lot also of like a an old photo of him because the AI wouldn't work when he wears a hat. Oh, Heath yeah. He's got a lot of opinions on this. Uh, I'll give him a, I'll give him a five. Okay. I mean, well. that makes sense. They, they yeah. look very similar. Okay. So that's all of them. So the two highest were Scott and Todd. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That adds up. The math is there. Yeah. And I like that. I gave uh, Scott a better rating. That'll really burn Todd. Okay. So, so now just, we got to pick. What the fuck, dude? He's got a higher rating. I'm way hotter as a girl. So just one last look at Scott real quick. Yeah. Okay. Let me see Todd. And then Todd. As a girl, no, because the, his eyes are too big and his nose is too big. Scott, <laughs> Scott wins as a girl. Wow. wow! I mean, that makes sense. Look at the gorgeous golden blonde hair. Yeah, just wow. I can hold you at night while, while you cry. Look at those biceps. Call me Scott. Okay, we're gonna end it with this. I when we first started this podcast, I saw you out of a guitar center, and we were just going down the street. I was like, "Oh, Indy, stop the we're, car!" No, no, we were driving down the street, and they saw you walking in or waiting. Yes, she was, he was like waiting in a guitar, like in it's, line for a guitar center. I don't know. It's a big thing in my family. Just the guitar Wyatt center. Wyatt loves guitar center. Charlie hates guitar center. Oh yeah. Uh, and so I, I, he always asked to go, and so that's I mean, probably why I was there. You were there, and I was like, oh, we should have him. He on. literally was like. Pull the car over. We should go ask him to be in the podcast. I was like, I'm not pulling the car over and walking up to someone we don't know to ask to be on a podcast. He's going to think that's so weird. Uh, I'm know, a, I'm did a, you ask? I'm going to take no. a bullet by the horns. No, no, no. no we Because I would not she, pull the car over. It, it was a big argument in the friend it has, group. No. Really? Jason, yeah. this has been an argument for months. Every it single was, time we we pass that guitar center, I'm like, you wouldn't let about. me get him on the podcast. It's that, and then it's that I accidentally missed an uh, an invite to go meet LeBron James. LeBron James. Oh my God. Oh boy. I missed it. Yeah, that's a big mess up. You missed it in your email? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, well, thank, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, look out for All Good Things podcast. You can yep. find it where? Yeah, on nationation.com. Nash the thenashnation.com. Thenashnation.com. Yeah. Yeah. On the screen, in the description. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, um, if you stay to the end, make sure to to send me a clip of Jason's favorite uh, of bits, one that you like from, from any of the videos. I'd like mm. to watch a couple more. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's episode of Dropouts. I'm Indiana. That's Zach Justice. That's your music. This is... Jason Nash. Uh, make sure to follow Dropouts on Dropouts Pod on Instagram, and we'll see you guys next week for another episode of Dropouts. Thank you, guys. Bye. That was fun. That was a great one. Sorry.